It is coming up now on 803. All right, it's overcast out there today. 72 degrees right now. Dave Baker says a mixture of sun and clouds today, a high temperature at 84. We'll have a 20% chance of showers today. And then showers kicking up a little bit for tomorrow and definitely by Sunday. So we're starting a little bit earlier today because we have a chance to catch up with one John Bell Edwards, one of our candidates for the governor's race. Sir, good morning. Good morning, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to be with you and your listeners today. Well, we certainly do appreciate it, and I, I um, uh, you know, we've been working to get this done. I'm glad we were able to do it. All right, so starting off, let's talk a little bit about you are the lone Democrat in the race. Um, I'm kind of curious from your perspective, um, what does that kind of feel like to you? I mean, does party affiliation really matter so much to you? Well, you know, it doesn't matter so much to me, uh, and and. It increasingly is mattering less and less to a broad portion of the electorate in the center of the electorate. Um, you know, wh- whether it's right or wrong, whether you agree with, with the reasons for it, we have a, an unpopular Democratic president. We have a very unpopular Republican governor. And so people in Louisiana are saying, you know what, rather than reflexively voting party, uh, we probably ought to take a look at the individual and see who's best positioned to lead our state at this critical point in time after eight years, I believe, of failed leadership from Bobby Jindal, uh, where much of what we prioritize in Louisiana has been dismantled. Who is it that that has the right position on the issues, the right education, the experience uh, in order to lead us right now? And and party does not play a huge role into uh, that decision making process for most people. And and uh, that's that's why I believe we're going to have a very, very competitive election cycle. I think we're going to do extremely well tomorrow uh, being a runoff. Uh, uh, and and I look forward uh, to the runoff and, and the next election on November 21st. I, I, I absolutely expect to win this race and and, uh, and move Louisiana forward, put Louisiana first, which is my campaign slogan. OK, Mr. Edwards, in putting Louisiana first, um, everybody knows that whoever is chosen as governor will have to have a, a special legislative session uh, as soon as as they are you know, done with their inauguration ball activities. So what it would be if John Bell Edwards is elected governor, what would be on your agenda, sir, for that special session uh, in terms yeah. of specifics? What would you do? Well, first of all, we're going to have to have two special sessions before the regular session that starts in March, because in March. Because it's an even-numbered year, that regular session, you can't do tax and right. fiscal policy. Right. We find ourselves right now, we are over $400 million short uh, in the current fiscal year already. So the first special session will come around the 1st of February of next year, and we're going to have to fix that $400 million shortfall. Now, some of that's going to be cuts. Some of it will be looking for savings and efficiency. Some of it will be looking for additional flexibility to allocate cuts across a broader spectrum of the budget rather than just focusing them on higher education and health care. But, but we're also going to have to look for revenue opportunities, uh, and we're going to look pre- specifically at tax expenditures, tax uh, giveaways, if you will, credits and, and rebates that are costing too much and not producing enough return on investment. Mm-hmm. And while, while we might like them, can we say they are more important to us than higher education and health care? And mm-hmm. I would remind everybody, uh, just this past spring, LSU and Baton Rouge prepared paperwork to declare bankruptcy. Right, right. And all we had to do to, to trigger that bankruptcy was cut all of higher education, not LSU, but all of our education, by another $200 million, as Bobby Jindal proposed in his executive budget, and they were going to declare bankruptcy. Well, we, we cannot go there. I mean, that's, that's just not uh, a, a feasible alternative. So we're going to find a solution to that. And we're going to we're going to work on the structural deficit. You know, we've had seven years of of revenue shortfall. And then we're going to have a second special session in order to address the shortfall for the next fiscal year, which is right now a billion Mm dollars. Now, the changes we make in the first special session will alleviate that problem to some degree, but not get it completely under control. And we're going to have to make sure that, that we don't have that billion dollar shortfall next year. Because otherwise, we're right back where we don't want to be, and that's cutting higher education again. Uh, you know, ULL has been cut over 50 percent of its of its state support for higher education, and at the same time, the kids going to school there are paying 90 percent more in tuition. Uh, that is a disaster. We cannot continue that. 
Coming up now on 808, John Bell Edwards, candidate for governor, is joining us. We do have to to take a break, sir. When we come back in three minutes, next question is going to be about specific cuts. I mean, specific cuts, where can we really, really do some cutting? So we'll talk with him. If you'll just stand by, sir, we'd appreciate that. We'll be back in three minutes on KPL News Time. Coming up now on 811 as we continue our conversation with State Representative John Bell Edwards. He's one of the gentlemen that would like to be the next governor of the state of Louisiana. Talking about topics this morning and trying to um, get as much info in as we can, sir. And thanks once again for joining us. I want to ask you specifics. I mean, I, we know, okay, so $400 million, we got to fix our current fiscal year. Then about a billion bucks, that a billion bucks will be in our next fiscal year. So we have all these fi- financial issues. Can you think of some things right off the top of your head that we can immediately go to and say, you know, if we cut this, we would be doing a good thing for Louisiana in the sense that we'd save some money? Well, first of all, saving money is always a good thing. What what we have to focus on is always delivering state service at a reduced cost. So anywhere you can find savings and efficiencies, we need to do that. Uh, We need to create additional flexibility so that we allocate cuts and don't concentrate them on higher education and and health care, but allocate them across the, the spectrum of the budget. We can do that by looking at the statutory dedications. There's about $2 billion worth of those. Now, you're not going to save $2 billion because the reason those monies are dedicated to begin with is because they serve a very uh, important purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're not more important than, than, for example, ULL, or they're not more important than LSU or keeping our safety net hospitals open. So you can you can reduce spending in those areas if you will undedicate it, uh, and, and we're going to look at that as well. I would also tell you that, that we need to bring our federal tax dollars back to Louisiana and make them work for us when it helps us meet our obligations to our people and save money. Uh, the, the fiscal office scored the Medicaid expansion, for example, and mm-hmm. we would have saved $52 million this year had we expanded Medicaid, which means we would have accepted our tax dollars back from Washington so that our working poor families would have health care coverage here in Louisiana. But instead, our dollars are going to the 30 states that did expand their programs, and their working poor is getting cared for in their hospitals. So I would do that. But but I will tell you, we are going to take a look at every single tax giveaway. I'm talking about tax credits, tax rebates. They all need to be capped so that they don't have runaway costs. They all need to be sunsetted so that every few years the proponents of those giveaways have to uh-huh. come in and, ex- and justify their existence. And then we have to reduce and or eliminate those that are not producing a return on investment that is commensurate with what they're costing. Uh, we, we can do this. We, we can fix our problems. But, but I do want to tell you, we cannot do it with a cuts-only approach. We have had seven years of budget shortfall. The first six, all we did was a cuts-only approach. There was never any effort to try to free up revenue. Uh, but ultimately, this past session, we said, you know, we cannot cut higher education again because if we do, we're going to drive uh, these institutions into financial exigency, which is the equivalency of bankruptcy. Uh, and we just can't do that in Louisiana, and, and we're still in that same place. So I don't want to pretend to people that we can only cut and, and solve our problems because we, we cannot. We're going to have to make strategic investments, uh, and, and that's going to require uh, uh, new revenue in the sense – not new in the sense that we have to raise tax rates, but we have to stop some of the tax spending. You know, We spend through the tax code too. We don't just spend through the normal appropriations. We spend through the tax code. We're going to have to reduce those tax expenditures to create savings to reallocate the higher priority items. Okay. All right. Now, let me ask you, I'm, I'm very interested in what you thought about the Office of Motor Vehicles sending out those letters. So we have this this uh, Office of Debt Recovery. Uh, it's been, what, two years since the legislature passed that. Then these letters go out from OMV trying to collect on folks who either had a lapse in their insurance or didn't have proof of their insurance. But some of these people are complaining that it's been years and years that this is these letters are referring to. I'm very interested in what you thought about that. Well, first of all, that's patently ridiculous. We if someone uh, within the last year or two allowed uh, their insurance to lapse and they drove without insurance, then I think it's perfectly appropriate. Uh, But we have statute of limitations on all sorts of crimes. Uh, that are much shorter than than, than the time period involved here uh, for simple failure to maintain insurance. And the problem is, uh, what makes this so unfair is, if if you get a letter and it says eight years ago insurance lapsed on your vehicle, 
you don't have the records at your disposal right. to prove that that's untrue. And so it's fundamentally unfair. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I have enough confidence in, in the folks at the Department of Public Safety and the Office of Motor Vehicles that they're going to reverse course, and they're going to they're gonna put some guidelines in place and retract those letters and apologize to the people of Louisiana who got these letters demanding money uh, for something that, that may or may not have happened. But if it did, it was so long ago that the individual would have no ability uh, to refute the allegations. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not what that's not what we stand for in the United States of America. We're all about due process of law and having a fair system. Uh, that's unfair. Uh, it's unnecessary. And, and, and we need to make sure that that stops immediately. Speaking with John Bell Edwards, and just want to ask you a simple question, because the thought has been put out there that these letters have gone out as a result of legislation and uh, the dealings that happened during the Louisiana legislative session. Is that true or not? I mean, it was well, passed with debt recovery, right, with that organization? I mean, with that thing they created? Yes, but but the authority was given them to try to collect money that was owed because people uh, had uh, allowed their insurance to lapse. Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody told any legislator. Well, I, I can't say that, I, but I, I would be very, very surprised if any legislator was told. I know that I was never told that they were going to send out this number of letters uh, complaining about violations that happened years and years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- this this is just beyond the the, the pale of anything that that we uh, were briefed on, and certainly not consistent with the spirit with which that. A change in law was enacted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just seems, you know, kooky. That that only a pack rat keeps something from eight years ago. That's well, nuts. That's absolutely well, nuts. I, I would, I wouldn't be able to do it. I can, I can assure you of that. Yeah, certainly. All right. When we come back, we have to take another quick break. We always have uh, breaks that we have to do. John Bell Edwards continues our discussion with us, and we want to talk to him uh, coming up about what he thinks makes him different from the other candidates in the race. So if you'll stick with us, sir, we'll be right back in just about three yes, minutes. Sir. All righty. Coming up now on 818, Acadiana's Morning News. Coming up now on 822, as we are going to have our final segment now with John Bell Edwards, one of the candidates, uh, major candidates, of course, for Louisiana's gubernatorial race. All right. So before we get into what you think separates you, sir, from the other folks in the race, I'm very curious as to what this gubernatorial election and this race has been like for you. Describe for us what what this whole process has been like. Well, first of all, it has been reinvigorating for me. We really? have traveled the state. Yes, we have traveled the state for months now, uh, meeting with people, listening to them, uh, whether they're small business owners, retirees, uh, public sector workers, uh, just. just Minimum wage workers, African Americans, whites, it's, it's of all parties, obviously. And the people of Louisiana are just wonderful, warm, generous, good, decent people. And, and I have been reinvigorated. I have tremendous confidence uh, in the judgment of the people of Louisiana and in our future. And really, you know, when you travel the state the way we have, um, you, you really, you, you always know that Louisiana is special. Uh, but when you travel all the different regions and see how unique their history and their heritage, their culture is, uh, we we live in a wonderful, wonderful state. Mm-hmm. And, and it just validates uh, the love that I have for Louisiana and its people. And it has been a, a really a great experience. Now, uh, almost all of it positive. All of the negative stuff uh, has happened in the last few weeks, you know, on the television but that does not obscure what the reality is on the ground when you travel the state and meet people. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about what you think makes you different from the other three major candidates in the race. And anybody you want to start with first, you want to start with Vitter? What do you think well, really really differentiates you from, from Senator Vitter? Well, first of all, I'm not a creature of Washington. Uh, I haven't been in public life since 1992. Uh, I am a part-time legislator uh, over eight years. Um, and, and, but I will tell you what differentiates me from David Vitter. It differentiates me from the other two as well. Um, it's the fact uh, that, that I believe I possess the leadership ability to lead this state at this point in time. It's the type of leadership that I learned at the United States Military Academy at West Point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's the leadership that I, that I further developed as an Army officer uh, commanding paratroopers in the 82nd Airborne Division. 
Uh, it is it is the leadership that I believe I've shown in the legislature over the last eight years, standing up to Bobby Jindal and his disastrous policies, not just six months ago or a year ago, but six and seven years ago when he was at the height of his power, but his policies were wrong for Louisiana. I stood up and said so, uh, and none of my opponents were doing that. They were all his biggest cheerleaders and enablers. Uh, and, and today we find ourselves in a very bad place in Louisiana because of those very policies. And now they want to create some distance between themselves and Bobby Jindal, and I understand that. They mm -hmm. need to. But the fact of the matter is I understood back then uh, how bad those policies were, and I had the courage to stand up uh, and, and lead the fight against them uh, while my opponents did not. So this is about leadership. This is about judgment. It's about vision. And I believe, uh, you know, uh, on those scores, I, I have the leadership ability uh, to lead Louisiana right now, bringing people together to pursue the common interest. You know, we've had a governor for eight years who's been worried about self-interest. He's been running for go uh, president, uh, and he's been traveling out of state. Mm. And many of the decisions he made here in Louisiana weren't about what's in our best interest. It was about what he thought was in his best interest. Uh, we need to put Louisiana first. That's why that's why my slogan for this campaign is putting Louisiana first. And it's not just a campaign slogan. It's what I'm going to do each and every day as our next governor. All right. John Bell Edwards uh, has been our guest. We only have 60 seconds left, sir. And that's what we give to you as, as, as the candidate. Really just one final push. Uh, you know, for the last 60 seconds, you talk to our listeners and the voters on why you would like to see them vote for you, sir, please. Well, first of all, uh, Everybody ought to get out and vote uh, tomorrow if you didn't early vote. Yeah. We, we should all take our civic responsibility seriously. Yep. Uh, it is a tremendous blessing that we have. It's, a, it's one of the rights that we have, and, and many veterans have, have fought. Um, too many have died in order to preserve that, that right, and so we shouldn't take it for granted. Uh, and I do want to thank all of the veterans out there for their service. But it's just important to go out and vote, and I would encourage you to vote for me, John Bell Edwards, number five on the ballot. Uh, because we do need to take this state in a new and better direction. Uh, we need to elect a governor who has a leadership ability to bring us all together. And I have the relationships in the legislature among Republicans, Democrats, and independents, and out in local government, in the business community, the higher education community. I know what's broken in this state. I know I have the leadership ability to get it fixed. And I'm asking the people of Louisiana to cast their vote for me, give me that opportunity. I will never embarrass them. I will always be honest with them, and I will always fight to put Louisiana first. John Bell Edwards has been our guest. Sir, thank you very much. I'm very pleased that you could work it out with your schedule. We do appreciate the time. Thank you so much, and I appreciate y'all. You're welcome, sir, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Okay. All okay. right, coming up now on 827, we have a quick break. We've got a little brief look at headlines. When we come back, Scott Angel is next on the list. So the annual LAGCO Career Fair, it's going to be held on October the 29th from 9 to 2. Are you looking for a job? It's at the Cajun Dome Arena. For more information on LAGCO and the Career Fair, you can go and find all the info at lagco.com.